I have today to share with you a really colorful piece that um, is using a line drawing that I created of my husband that I was able to use scan and cut to actually cut out of chipboard uh, just out of my simple line drawing. Here you'll see this was just the line drawing again, the sketch that I did my husband. And just to simplify it, I traced it onto a piece of white paper. And so in this tutorial today, I'm really, I'm going to share with you different settings for using with thin chipboard. That's what the uh, silhouette is cut out of. And just different uh, tips and tricks with working with thinner, more delicate pieces. And just the, the versatility that, and honestly, just the, I, I was really impressed that Scan and Cut could cut such gorgeous details out of chipboard and create this just fun, funky art for my family. So to start off my caricature art, uh, what I did is I took just a doodle sketch that I had created a while back of my husband. And this was just a line drawing that uh, I did just for fun. And I actually just went in and I traced it, but did it with a broader uh, stroke, so with a Sharpie pen. Now you'll notice that there's some imperfections where there's, you know, I kind of made his head a little too big there. That's the nice thing about Scan and Cut. Um, now granted it is connected, but after I do my cut, I could easily just snip that off and it'll be fine. It's just super impressive that I can scan this in and create a cut with it. I've already done a sample cut here so that you can see it actually will happen. Uh, this is just showing you the positive and the negative here where I was able to go ahead and cut it out. So you can see it actually will work really nicely. So we are um, going to, now like I said, I have already scanned it in. I, in order to do so, I went into scan, scan to cut data, I scanned in my image, let the machine create the cut file for me, and then I went in and just edited some of the stray areas. Uh, but since my image is already in there, we're going to go ahead and skip this step and go in straight to cutting. So now that I've checked my settings, what I can do is pull up my pattern. I can um, hit patterns, and I have it in my saved data in my machine, and I know that it's the last image, image 25. I'll hit OK. And one thing that you'll definitely want to make sure to do before you edit, well, not before you edit, but before you, once you have your final image, after you've taken any little stray items, you've deleted those, what you'll want to do is always to remember to unify. So you hit the grouping red button there, hit all of it, OK, and then this bottom middle icon in the edit, it is a red rectangle with a circle and a triangle in between it that is the unify. This is irreversible, but for this, I don't want it to change. This allows me to group all items together so that I can move it around my page if I need to. All right, and like I mentioned before, I've already done my test cut, so I just want to make sure that I move my design away from there so that it doesn't cut out from there. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. All right, and cut. Now we can remove. Now I'm going to be very careful because this is a thicker material and there are some really kind of rigid areas, um, especially around the hair and the eyelashes and such. And I'm just going to be very, very careful, especially since this is a very delicate, intricate cut based off of a line drawing. I really want to make sure that I go nice and slow. So I ended up doing a second cut because the first cut, even though I had done a test cut on the material, the shape wasn't intricate enough to take into account all of these shapes. So it didn't really come out as clean as I'd like. So I ended up uh, adjusting my settings. My blade depth is now at a 7, 
And then I adjusted my cut pressure to a four. So it's cut speed one, pressure four. And that gave me this really beautiful, clean, just gorgeous clean uh, drawing. Now I do have a couple areas I just need to snip away. You can see right there. Just because when I was drawing it, I was kind of trying to be accurate, but it ended up not being too accurate. So I have those little strays. I can just cut those away. So I'm going to put this aside for now and work on the base. Starting off the base of my canvas, I have a 10 by 10 canvas and it's been gessoed. I'm going to take a, what is this, an oil pastel and just scribble some love notes or whatever on this. Since it's a kind of a circus caricature of my husband, we're going to decorate it with tissue paper to give it that carnival circus kind of feel, but I really want there to be some sort of script behind there, so I'll start with that. I have my background set, and now I'm ready to layer my pieces of tissue paper on top. And I can keep adding more and more if I want the opacity to get uh, uh, more consistent so that you don't see a lot of that because the main focus is going to be the face we put on top. little progress here. So as I mentioned before you can layer tissue paper um, just like opacity layers when you're adding one on top of the other it ultimately makes it a little bit more uh, less transparent. So what I've done in the middle is added some lighter color so the light pale pinks and the whites so that when I place my I'll still put the colors over it but it'll help make the writing in the back less legible so that when I put the picture on top it'll really help to pop and yet you can still see all the different kind of uh, word and script all around. Now that I have my entire canvas covered with the tissue paper I have an area in the center that I've uh, put extra layers on so that when I put my face on um, it won't be distracted by the writing. So, we are now going to transfer the face, and I've gone ahead and trimmed off these extra little pieces here. We are just going to, I've already prepped my canvas by, uh, by um, putting some adhesive, so some Mod Podge down there so that I can just place this on there. And I'm going to really just eyeball this as I lay it down because there's a couple different pieces. There's the the main piece here and then there's also the ear, the eyebrow, and the eye. So yeah I think that looks nice right there. And afterwards I can uh, put a clear coat of like a craft spray paint, or I can put some Mod Podge on there as well. Actually, I think I am going to just put some Mod Podge down, just to cement it down. So already you can see how cool that's kind of coming out. Now, let me make sure that there's some underneath here. And now we can add the other pieces. We just want to make sure that each piece is definitely adhered down. And I'm using matte Mod Podge because it doesn't show much of the brush stroke. It really is a matte finish. It's kind of like an eggshell. So it really makes it nice to where you don't have to see too much of the brush stroke. And it, it doesn't interfere too much with your artwork. 